So last week, we'll recap quickly. We cut out styrofoam, inch and a half, we bought from, and thank you for the thumbs up. We bought some, I bought some inch and a half styrofoam, just regular generic styrofoam board from lumber store here local. You can buy it anywhere they sell the stuff, Home Depot, Lowe's, etc. I bought a cheap $5 can of paint, and then I showed you uh, what I was using for uh, dirt and for sand, and then one product called um, Woodland Scenics Blended Turf. So we did that, and then we rolled it into the paint, and now the paint has been drying all week. I really haven't touched this except to demonstrate to one guy that stopped by for a visit. And um, we're really ready to clean off our board, get the loose stuff off, and then begin laying out the field so we can plant corn. That's where we're headed. Okay, let's do this. You can see this is all kind of loose here. Okay. So there it is. And what I'm going to do, well, I don't want to make a big mess in the shop, okay? So if, if, if I could do this outside, I would. But to get it out of my shop, I would have to turn it on its side and make a mess on the floor anyway. So I'm going to kind of get the worst of it toward the bottom of the layout. And you do not have to discard this unless you want to, but you could actually recycle all this except for the foam crap that I'm gonna that I didn't vacuum up. I'll come back here and clean all this up when you guys aren't watching. You don't need to see me cleaning up sand and stuff. Okay. Okay, now we can go ahead and Okay, what I'm doing is just getting the loose stuff off. If you were going to have this in your home, I would definitely take some extra time to make sure you get this kind of cleaned up a little bit. There we go. Since this is going to be in my shop and not go in my house, it doesn't have to be as clean. I would make sure, if this was going in my house, I would definitely get the loose stuff off. That's just my way. Okay, we have this clean now. Okay, let's see where we're at so you guys can see what we got going on. Okay, I think I'm going to uh, move you a little bit here. Okay, so now you're actually sitting on the layout. Okay, so we're making a cornfield, right? And I'm going to show you the corn I'm using. I'll just put this over here. This is the Top Shelf Replicas corn. And then I also told you you could use party toothpicks if that suits you for a little bit more um, economical situation, if that's your desire. I'm not going to go ahead and lay out the entire field for you because once you do this, I mean, you'll get the idea here pretty quick of uh, what we're doing. So there's a couple of ways to lay out your field. One, you could use a good old-fashioned ruler, and you could measure out a half inch, okay? And let's start with that. Let's get the row spacing quick. My header right here is on 30-inch rows. 30 inches and 164 scale is 0.46 inches. So if you were to do the math, these should be 0.46 apart on center inches. For our math, for, for government work in, in the Rock and H lab, we're using a half inch, 0.5. Okay. So all we're going to do, if you wanted to, you can come back here and you can measure a half inch on center one to all the rows clear across the field. And I'm not doing that. I'm just going to, for tonight, all I want to do is just lay out a few of the rows to give you a general idea, and then we'll come back. Uh, and then I want to really get to laying some corn so I can show you a secret trick that the Jedi's taught me. Okay. So, just to recap briefly, you can measure out a half, one, uh, you know, half inch on center, all the way across 
and then use a sharp tool like this to make a light line, not a dark line, just a light line for your rows. And that way you know where to plant your corn and keep everything straight. All right. Well, since I'm in the lab and this is my place, I made this thing. I went ahead and measured on a piece of scrap lumber, a half inch, all the way to this point right here and actually left a few blank. Uh, and then I just put some finish nails in these holes. Okay, so these are gonna make my, this is gonna make my field. Um, yeah, and I'll just leave it at that. Now, I'm gonna pick you up here quick. You'll notice when we made the field or layout last time, I went ahead and made my road, which isn't a very good road. You can see the sand really didn't penetrate that uh, paint as much as I'd like, but we can redo that, not a problem. Anyway, I made everything at an angle, so I'm gonna lay out my field at an angle. Why? Because I can, and I want to. This is my layout, dadgummit. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda get myself, I'm eyeballing here, trying to keep my lines somewhat, actually, Excuse me, I gotta take you for a short ride again. You really don't need to do this, but for some reason I feel compelled to. I'm gonna do this. All righty. We're just gonna measure this out. I can't believe I'm doing this, this is crazy. I never do this kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure two feet out from my road, make a mark there and this way I can make like work ground over here or I can make another little mini field thing going on if I want to so I'm going to take another one and on the bottom end we're going to measure two feet behind you can't see this not in the shop of, shot of course there's two feet perfect okay now it'll be straight right Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my fancy dancy tool here, move my corn. I'm just gonna start clear back here. I'm just scoring my field. My goal, being just to make some lines that are light enough that I can see them so I keep my corn rows straight, at least reasonably straight. And it looks like these did not score very well. We're going to push them out a little. So I went ahead and drilled pilot holes for all these nails and uh, I wanted to come and find out my nails aren't all the same length. Who'd have thought a $2 deal of nails from China would not yield straight nails? Who'd have thought? Okay. This one you can see didn't score very well at all. Let's take you a little, let's get you down in there. Look at that. Now you can see the lines I'm working with. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna come back over. And this one here on the end is almost a half inch away from the edge so we're gonna roll with that one that'll be our guess row okay I went ahead on this run I'm actually pushing quite a bit harder to make my scores scored lines a little more distinct And that worked out much better. Okay. And actually, since we're here, 
and this is working better than I thought it would, I'm going to go ahead and Okay, now the field is laid out. I'm liking that, I'm happy, happy with that. Now comes the fun part. And I say that with just a wee bit of sarcasm here. Just a little sarcasm. Okay, let's go ahead and get that out of the room. Here is the top shelf replicas corn. If you recall watching this, um, this is $60 for 300 of these, okay? So, there's a couple of ways you can do this so you don't have to buy as much corn, but you give the illusion that your field is bigger than it really is. So what um, Garrett Mock and I did when we did the big silage display we took to St. Louis, was you put your, ch you arrange your choppers, so uh, well, actually, you plant your corn from the edge of your field backward, okay? So I only wanted to buy, I'm only going to plant 300 corn stalks here. I'm only going to plant 300. And the reason for that is, um, we're going to plant one, two, three, four, eight rows total, because I have how many choppers? Two. I'm going to plant eight rows, actually, and this one's got to be behind this one. I'm going to start over here, planting eight rows of corn. Whoops, hold on, we got to get you out of there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm going to plant these back up the field until I start running out. Then what I'll do is I'll stop on four rows here, and then I'll plant four rows further back. That way my choppers in the field, they're finishing up this field. One will be back here loading trucks, another one will be over here loading trucks. And then that gives the illusion that the field is actually bigger than it is, and then they're also on their last pass. Obviously if you had more corn, you can make the field look full if you wanted it to, if you wanted to, but um, what we found was, well we bought how much, we spent like a thousand dollars on this corn on that layout. and. You know, you just, is that practical? No, not really. Um, for, for a lot of guys, that's just not practical. And for me, I didn't want to spend that kind of money uh, this time around. So I'm giving the illusion the field is bigger than it is. Then all of this over here will be corn stubble. And then real quickly, I'll show you quick over here uh, with this not having any corn stubble in it, excuse me. Remember, we didn't put any rows right here. What this will live, allow us to do is put a, a like a disc and a tractor over here, working this part of the field up. So now we have a little more, we, even on a small layout, remember this is only three by three, we're gonna have two choppers, six trucks. We'll be able to put a disc and a, and a, a tractor here. You could do something over on this little corner if you wanted to. You could put like a mower and something over here, it would make sense. Or you could just put like an idle sp a sprayer that's idling or, or it's just parked or a manure truck or something else. And then you can actually do something again over here with another machine. So you put a lot of machinery on a field, on a layout that makes it look somewhat realistic and like it all makes sense. That's what I have in mind when I'm making these. I, I want it to make sense. I want a lot of iron out there. I want it all to make sense. Okay, so for my two choppers, I'm going to have six, six trucks. That makes kind of sense. You know, that's kind of what you need depending on the long haul. And we'll just assume that it's got a long haul, so they need all six trucks. Okay, so the top shelf replicas, replicas corn. Okay, guys, this is where you're going to get a bowl of popcorn and, and maybe doing something else like reading a book because this is boring as heck right here. 
Uh, it comes with a wire. It's wrapped in this fabric and it's green. And then I always use a plier just because my fingers get sore after a while. And then you just start planting corn. Whoops. Okay. Sometimes your styrofoam, the consistency through the board is weird. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then, like I said, now what we'll do is we will go from here back. So one thing I have noticed when I'm planting this corn is to keep this hand out here over the field. Now, another way, this is just a little trick if you want to use it. Okay, you do not have to plant these that tight. If you want your field to look lush and full, plant it right. I mean, plant it tight, which means keep your plants close together. Uh, on the other hand, I'm putting these about a half inch apart. Is that 164 scale? Heck, to the no, it's not. It is not 164. But I'm going to be able to make, I'm going to just drag out this expensive corn a little further. Now, don't get me wrong, I call it expensive. I think it's worth exactly what you pay for it. Every one of these is handmade, by the way. Somebody in China probably has a drinking problem after making these. Once you kind of figure out what to do, and I mean, it does go somewhat fast, and actually, to speed this along, I'll pop a movie on my TV in here, bribe my daughters to come out somehow. Probably I'll have to buy them a snowball. My girls, I'll buy you a snowball on Friday if you help me today. I don't know if that'll be good enough. A large snowball. They might uh, require a little bit more money than that. Also, if you stagger these a little bit, that'll make it look full. Hey, we're not, this isn't a real cornfield, right? This is just fake ones. So we're going to do our best with the resources we have. And what I'm doing is planting right into the lines that I drew with my nail tool. So far, aside from the $60 in corn, the $5 in paint, um, the dirt was free, the sand was free, I had the, art, the turf left over from another project, but there's probably $2 worth of turf on this field. Um, we really don't have a whole lot in the cost of materials, and if you recall the 4x8 board was $36. Uh, another builder's tip, if you go to Home Depot, or at least this worked for me when I built one in Texas with my nephew, we went over there on New Year's Eve morning to their local Home Depot, and I found a broken piece. <laughs> I said, hey, this is broken. Can you do a better price on it? He goes, yeah, I'll sell it to you for $15. Okie dokie. So we bought a one inch piece, not an inch and a half, but a one inch piece of, I think it was pink board, um, at the Home Depot where they live in Texas. So we got, oh, and then we bought, oh, let's see, did we buy a cheap canopy? I don't remember. Okay, you get the idea here on the corn? So, these first four rows here are going to go back as till it's logical and I wish I could give you a good straight answer on how that's going to work but I can't because I just don't know how far this will go and then the other four rows the outside four rows here will go back further so we may end up with something that looks like this which is so we could say this guy's on his last pass and then this uh, this chopper over here he could be way back here and that would help us scatter out the trucks. You'll have to decide what look you're going for when you do something like this. Okay, before I let you go, 
Uh, the corn comes in brown, but presently I believe the brown is out. At least my nephew's been looking for some brown corn and he cannot find it because he wants to make a dry corn field uh, for a combine. So I went to the dollar store, bought a 500 of these toothpicks, box of 500. You can stretch them out. Uh, when Garrett Mock and I did the corn layout for St. Louis, we found you can successfully break these into four pieces and get along quite fine. Tonight, I'm just doing it in thirds. I think the longer ones are slightly easier to come in, but you don't have to do uh, you don't have to do thirds. You can do fourths, and they're fine. And of course, I had to mix them up. Get you a better container for your <laughs> for your toothpicks, right? Where I think it's about as easy to break new ones than it is to dig those out. We can get them later. And sometimes they break clean, and sometimes they don't. Okay. I have found when stabbing the toothpicks, get you an awl or something, and just poke your holes. I have found that works really, really well. And the reason for that is, if you remember those toothpicks, some are blunt on the ends. So you can go through and poke a whole bunch of holes like I'm doing. And then you just sit there and start putting them in. couple of ideas when you're putting in stubble for this. One idea is, if you'll notice, my outside tire on my chopper is going to run on rows one and four. It's going to run over them. So what you can do is just go ahead and push that toothpick kind of flush in and then it makes it look like that's where your wheel rows are. Okay, and then you would leave the inner two rows just up a little bit. Again, I'm using my needle nose. I just think that's just a lot easier if you use your needle nose. Frankly, it's just, to me, it's worlds easier. You don't have to worry about being real consistent on how you place these, because guess what? Is your regular corn stubble, is it all consistent and gorgeous? Well, I suppose if you got BT corn and a chopping header, you can get it all pretty much the same height. But then, if you have trucks running in and out of the field and grain carts and this and that, and, or maybe you had a poor stand, and um, I mean, there's just lots of choices here to make it look authentic the way you want it to look. Remember, my rule is if, if you're happy with the way with what you're doing, you're doing it right. And if somebody says, oh, I would never do it that way, well, big damn deal, it's not going in your house. It's in my house, it's in my shop. You make it the way you want it. And if you like it, then you did it right. And if you think, wow, that kind of blows, well, then you do it over and do it a different way. So you can see here, here's the outside row. There's my wheel row, wheel row, and then the two center rows underneath the chopper. So it didn't run over these two rows of corn. Remember, these are four row heads. And then you'll just do that through the rest of the field. And if you want, now here's something you can do if you, if you feel like it. Um, leave a skip. I mean, leave an open spot. Maybe if you still run a, a field cul uh, a row cultivator, maybe your employee or, or you had a wipeout and you knocked out, you know, 
four rows of corn someplace in the center, or maybe you had a, a herbicide uh, mess up or, or planter skip, so you got four rows that are that are missing for an inch. Um, that's perfectly fine because that makes your layout look real. Um, you can come out here and leave a few of these dead soldiers like so. You know, every once in a while, chopper does miss. So you can leave a few dead soldiers out there in the field. That's perfectly fine. Um, you can make uh, ruts in case you got out there and it's a little muddy. That's okay too. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit, but what I want to do now is you get the idea. This is how the cornfield's going to lay out, okay? And this is the cheaters, not the cheaters way. This is just an economical way to lay out a field so it looks, so you're using really, really nice high-end corn and you're making very good use of the space you have. So this is one way, remember. Chopper one over here in the back, he's finishing up his last pass. This one is finishing up his last pass. The field looks bigger than it really is. I mean, we're, if your imagination says the field's still going on off over here, you know, this way, that's kind of the illusion you might be going for. And then, of course, as I explained a bit ago, we have some real estate here for something. If we want to put a sprayer, some sort of tillage tool, we can have tillage over here, working up stubble going that way, that way, keep my thumb in the shot. Then you can do something in this little grassy area here. Um, I put mine at an angle to keep it interesting for me. Uh, of course, you can have your trucks and pickups and whatnot going down your gravel road. And then, of course, um, if you want to put a silage pile back over there someplace, you can do that too. And that's cool as well. Now that you have some skills, you have to start. No excuses. Yes, you have time. Kick out the TV or do whatever you gotta do. None of this takes a lot of time. We've done two things in 30 minutes and I've got probably, oh, maybe 30 minutes in collecting dirt for the field. And actually my daughter got the sand for me. so. But really, we're not out of a whole lot of time at this moment, okay, guys? You can put this together in no time, so do not use that as an excuse.